Hello guys, trying MOSFETs can be a wild ride, especially when it comes to tackling high speed MOSFETs. But fear not, because the charge pump here is to save the day. It's like a superhero for turning on the MOSFETs without any recharge time. If you are scratching your head, don't worry, I got a video to explain it all. So let's start. In our last video, we explored the fascinating world of bootstrap MOSFET driver. If you missed it, just click on the card above to get up to the speed. This type of driving technique is basically used for end channel MOSFET driving. If you recall the working of a bootstrap MOSFET driving technique, we charge this bootstrap capacitor through the diode when the low set switch is on. This capacitor provides the necessary gate voltage for this high side MOSFET to turn it on and this capacitor discharges. Well, imagine this, if there is no low side switch and we don't get any chance to recharge this capacitor, then it would be very bad to turn on this MOSFET. So basically, we have to provide PWM to the MOSFET. That means this MOSFET should turn on or off during the operation so that the bootstrap technique would work. But there are many applications where the high side MOSFET is on continuously. That means its duty cycle would be 100%. Let's take an example of an edge bridge motor drive, which we saw in one of our last videos. To run the motor in full speed, the MOSFET needs to be turned on fully, which includes a high side MOSFET and a low side MOSFET as well. Also, there might be an application of a buck converter where in the worst case, the output voltage is near to the input voltage. So the bootstrap driver method is not suitable for such low headroom applications. To avoid this problem, we have a different high side MOSFET driving technique called a charge pump or also called a flying capacitor. After hearing this, the capacitor will be like... Uh, <laughs> It is similar to the bootstrap driving technique as well. Here also a capacitor plays an important role. To understand how a charge pump works, we'll consider a circuit. So here we'll use two capacitors. One capacitor will provide the necessary charge to the gate and other capacitor will provide the charge to this capacitor all the time. So basically we are outsourcing functionality of one capacitor into two capacitors C1 and C2. In bootstrap driving technique, the charging of the capacitor was dependent on the low side switch of the converter. So it had dependency on the actual circuit. That is why it could not support 100% duty cycle, but we are about to change that. I'll provide a supply to this capacitor C1 so that it will charge from one hand and it will give to the next capacitor from the other hand. But I have to make sure while charging the capacitor C1, it should not discharge and while discharging, it should not charge. So to work on that, we'll employ some nifty switches, S1, S2 and S3 across these capacitors. Where S1 and S2 will turn on when C1 needs to be charged and S3 will turn on when C2 needs to be charged from the C1. And if the charge is not sufficient, S1 will also come to the rescue. Think of the charge pump as a water pump that uses energy to move the water uphill. MOSFET gate acts as a dam controlling the flow of water. The water is nothing but the current and the gate driver becomes the remote control that opens and closes the dam to let the water through. Now let's simplify things a bit. We'll replace S1 and S3 with fast switching diodes and introduce a totem pole circuit as S2. Oh, don't know what a totem pole circuit is? Click on this card above for a crash course. Additionally, we'll use another BJT to provide a constant PWM signal to charge the capacitor. Let's name these components randomly for now. The circuit diagram we are looking at is from the Nextperiod's edge bridge evaluation board, which is made up of discrete components like transistors, logic ICs, diodes, resistors, inductors, and capacitors. 
Nexperia has an amazing lineup of components that I use in many of my sockets. Shout out to Nexperia team for providing the development board and their MOSFET and gallium nitride fed application book, a power design engineer's holy grail. Well, you can request a free copy from the description below. Amazing, right? Now, let's dive into circuits working. First, we need to understand the requirements at the output. We have an N channel MOSFET which is used in an edge bridge network. So, we need sufficient voltage to turn it on. If the input voltage is 14 volts, we should aim for gate voltage of around 18 to 20 volts with respect to ground. That means a gate to source voltage will be 4 to 6 volts. Looking good so far. Moving on the input, we have a signal called C pump refresh, which is coming from the clock PWM output. This signal controls the BJT Q15 and Q17. It is basically a clock signal with 50% duty cycle having frequency of 62.5 kHz. At the collector of the Q17A, we get the LS supply rail. If we trace back this LS supply line, it comes from the output of a buck converter. So here's the deal. We provide a PWM signal at the input and BJT's Q17A and Q17B turn on and off alternately, allowing the current to flow to the bottom pin of the capacitor C57 at a frequency of 62.5 kHz. This means LS supply line is present for 50% of the time and 0 volts for the remaining 50%. As a result, there is no rapid voltage variation across C57. The voltage across it is equal to the supply voltage of the edge bridge. When the bottom pin of C57 is at 0 volts, the voltage across it is V supply. And when the bottom pin is at 9 volts, then the voltage across C57 is V supply plus 9 volts. We have filtering capacitor C21 and C22. For the drive input voltage, we charge from C57. This supply then goes to the input of Q20, a series passed BJT based voltage regulator. It keeps the output voltage regulated up to 10 volts with respect to MOSFET source. Thanks to that, it's in a diode. This circuit acts as a protection, ensuring that if the voltage is below 10 volts, there is no problem. However, if it exceeds 10 volts, the voltage regulator steps in and saves the day. Finally, we provide the required PWM signal at HS drive, which controls the totem pole circuit. Now, let's take a moment to appreciate the circuit in action. The scope is on. I will turn on the power supply. The input voltage is 14 volts and uh, I need to change the speed of the motor. Yes, and it is running with full speed. This is the C57 which is the charge pump capacitor. This is the C59 which is the storage capacitor and we have taken multiple test points out to check the waveform of the charge pump. Let's check out the clock pulse at TP39. If you see, the clock signal is rocking 50% duty cycle with around 62.5 kHz. The signal goes from 0 to 5 volts which will control the totem pole. Now the second green signal is the voltage at the capacitor C57 which charges and discharges. So when there is high signal at the C charge pump refresh, at this time the Q15 turns on which turns on the Q17B and capacitor C57 grounds. So the voltage across it will be around 14 volts. And if you see this, the minimum voltage is around 14 volts and the maximum voltage is around 22 volts across this capacitor. So basically it is charging and discharging and simultaneously it is providing charge to the capacitor bank which is C59. Well, these charge pump controls left high side MOSFET of the edge bridge. Now we'll see the voltage across the capacitor bank C59 at TP37. Now if you see this waveform, the voltage across this capacitor will be around 20 volts 
which is sufficient to turn on this MOSFET. And through HS Drive L, we provide sufficient PWM to control this MOSFET. So let's see how basically the gate signal is being provided at the HS Gate L. Well, the motor is running with full speed. Now I will change the speed of the motor. See, this is the PWM which is being supplied to the MOSFET gate. As the duty cycle changes, the speed of the motor also changes. And finally, if I remove the signal at all, the motor will turn off. And that's the magic of a charge pump MOSFET gate driver. Fantastic, we made it. That's the exhilarating world of charge pump MOSFET driver for you. I hope you picked something useful from this. And don't worry, I'll be back with some more mind-blowing content in the future. Till then, stay hungry, stay foolish.